snakes are some of the deadliest but most fascinating creatures on earth with roughly a hundred thousand people dying from envenomation every year across the globe now i believe it's important to understand these animals and lucky enough for me over the past few years i've traveled to some of the most remote locations tracking down some of the most venomous snakes on earth and teaching people about them we've had some pretty wild dangerous and incredible encounters with these animals throughout this time so here are the deadliest species of snakes that I've found so far. All right, take a look at this right here. Look at that snake. That is an inland taipan, a fierce snake, the most venomous snake on earth. And what's amazing to me is actually finding this snake on foot. Now I'm out here by myself filming this three day survival video. So there is no chance that I'm getting anywhere near this snake. So these snakes right here, live within the cracks in the ground and they only come out early mornings and late afternoons sometimes throughout the night because it's so hot out here in the desert now being the most venomous snake in the world you'd think that a lot of people would have died from getting bitten by this species but since they're actually considered a rare snake and they're so hard to find generally they're not aggressive they won't go and attack people there's been no deaths recorded from this snake species now over the years and even last year, there was a couple bites that happened out in this area. But generally, the only people who get bitten by these snakes are people who go looking for them. So generally, those people know the risks in coming out here. But yeah, just the patterns on this snake and that jet black head, they actually change colors seasonally. In winter, they're a much darker color. At the moment, as it's coming into summer, they lighten up. And if there's one thing I've learned over the years, dealing with the deadliest animals in the world is you can't get complacent complacency kills especially in a place like this you know it's one thing coming out here when you've got other people who can treat you with first aid but if i was bitten by this inland taipan out here there's almost no chance that i'm surviving it's a scary thing to think even if i got back to the car after applying first aid you know driving hours back into the closest town you'd probably end up feeling real dizzy pass out behind the wheel and that would be it now a lot of the time certain species of snakes will do something called a dry bite where they'll bite you but they won't actually inject any venom taipans are not known for that taipans are known most of their bites will actually inject venom so you know you might be really lucky but i wouldn't be relying on that if you're bitten by this snake out here I think this is really special, hey? Like just this moment walking with such an amazing animal. He's out here doing his own thing, trying to find food, living in the cracks, warming himself up for the day. I feel very blessed that I'm able to hang with him for just a short amount of time. To have this kind of experience for this long with this snake is amazing because generally when you see them they'll shoot right back down the cracks that they came up but the weird thing about this guy is there's cracks all through this area but he's choosing to go over this way the inland taipan the fierce snake the most venomous snake in the world and we've got one sitting right in front of us here see you later mate he just shot down a hole on the edge of this big grassland right here and yeah, we found one. We got to film it. <sighs> My God. Another day out here in Borneo, we're going on another big adventure. Hari's hand turned out to be okay. We wrapped it up, disinfected it. Okay, Hari? Okay. About five minutes ago, we saw a big croc cruising right past us down here. People were swimming in this area earlier this morning, but yeah, we're gonna go out, see if we can find some orangutans, king cobras, big pythons, maybe eat some bush tucker out there, and yeah, see what happens. Bye-bye. <laughs> 
We've got about an hour boat trip ahead of us. Then we're going to get to the spot where we're going to be searching around for wildlife. So this right here is a baby king cobra out here in the jungle. So cool to find one this size. What we're looking for is one a little bit bigger than this. But what this means is there's a mother around this area. The boys have told me that the cobras in this area are pretty territorial. So we might have a chance at finding this one's mum or another one sitting around this area. Now a cobra of this size is still venomous. It still has fangs long enough to penetrate my skin. So. I can't get bitten, it'd be the same as getting bitten by a big king cobra out here in the bush. Obviously at this size their venom glands are a lot smaller than the big ones, but still they have a venom that can kill 20 adult men. Absolutely crazy snake and you can see him standing up like that, half of his body is actually off the floor right now looking me dead in the eyes. How they get that little hood thing is they flatten out their bones, flatten out the muscles in their body. Imagine this cobra right here, but about 5 meters long, standing half of its body two and a half meters up into the air. It'd be absolutely crazy to see. Hmm. Ah. Yeah, better, Woo. okay. But yeah, just picking this snake up right now. That is absolutely beautiful. You can see him standing up in that little hood position, looking at the camera. I'm always amazed coming out here to Indonesia and finding these snakes. Done it a few times over the past few years. And that right there is just so cool. The King Cobra out here in the jungle of Borneo highly venomous species and a species that carries a massive energy about it as well. When you get a big king cobra looking at you in the face, it's a pretty crazy feeling to say the least. And hopefully we're going to find some bigger ones over this little trip. But yeah, look at that. Juvenile king cobra. All right, we'll let him go, mate. See ya. Take a look at that right there. This is a massive snake. This is what we were looking for out here in the jungle of Borneo. Are you kidding me right now? Look how big this animal is. We'll just bring him back out into a bit of a better place. So this right here is a massive king cobra out here in the jungle of Borneo. And he's looking at me right now. He was just eyeing off my cameraman. This is a species that you do not want to get bitten by all the way out here. The largest venomous snake in the world. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to pick it up at the moment, this big snake. And what I want to show you is the reason why people can kiss these snakes on the back of the head and touch them is because they go into a trance-like state when they're fixated on something right in front of it. So he's fixated on my guide at the moment and what I'm going to do is slowly pick it up, being very careful. Oh, take a look at that. You're right, buddy. Big King Cobra out here in the jungle of Borneo. Look at that. That is a magnificent snake and a snake big enough to take down an elephant with the amount of venom that it carries in its venom glands and a snake big enough to take down 20 of me. You can't get bitten by this snake out here. Highly venomous species. But a beautiful animal, an absolutely amazing animal. And this experience right here is what I wanted to have. Coming to the wild lands of Borneo, out here in the jungle, looking for these snakes, looking for orangutans, looking for all these animals. And I'm gonna remember this moment right here, but gotta be very careful. All right, buddy. A five meter king cobra, the biggest venomous snake in the world, and a magnificent one at that. Can't even fit my hands around it, this snake's so big. I'm gonna put him back down.
<laughs> Actually on the way out to the outback I stopped in at this remote section of bushland to look for snakes and I camped there overnight, woke up the next morning and take a look at what I found not far from my camp. Take a look at the size of this death adder right here. That thing is massive. That is a big female snake and the biggest death adder I have ever seen. If I put my hand down next to it, you can get a gauge at the size of this thing. But yeah, this right here, pretty magical experience to share with such an epic snake. And you know, I don't know if I'll ever see a death adder this big in my life again. So just enjoying this moment with such an awesome animal. Now this one right here is a big female snake. The males don't get this big. And even for this female to get to this size is very impressive because of the impact that cane toads have had. I know for a fact that there's a lot of cane toads in this area and to survive up until this size, it means that she would have had to never eat one in her life and there probably would have been a lot of opportunities to do so. Look at her. Absolutely awesome snake. Big girl. Could even be gravid at this time of year. So this is the fastest striking snake on earth and one of the most venomous snakes in the world. Especially death adder of this size, it's a big female and it would have a massive venom yield. So you wouldn't want to get tagged by one this size. And you can see that little tail on the back there. It's actually a different color from the whole body of the snake. Now what that is, is they use it when they're hunting. They'll bury themselves in leaves and put that little tail right next to their face and just do this over and over until a little lizard mistakes it for a worm or until a little mouse thinks it's its prey, strike out, envenomate it and swallow it whole. And you know, the reason that everyone loves this species of snake here in Australia is because they're so different to all of the other snakes that we have here now. They're in their same family as most of the venomous ones. They're elapids, but throughout the years of evolving, they've evolved into a snake with a completely different appearance to any other snake. They look more similar to the vipers and the adders that are overseas, but they're not in that family at all, which is pretty cool. And yeah, we're gonna keep road tripping out west and see what other animals we can find along the way. Cruising. On the way to Snake Island, part two. This is the second time I've been here recently. Last time I came down here, the water levels were so much higher, all up over there. But just up here is where I've got to leave my kayak for the next 24 hours. Oh, I'm so keen to see what deadly species we find on this trip. And from here on out, we're going to be trekking on foot to Snake Island. Let's go. Oh, it's a little keelback. There's another species of snake that I haven't found on this island yet. He's just shot back under that tree right there. No way, that's a roughy. That is a rough scale. That's a highly venomous snake. I just walked to the other side of the island to see if there's any snakes over there. I didn't really explore it too much last time I came here. First snake we find is a highly venomous rough scaled snake. I would be in so much trouble if I got bitten by this guy out here. Let's get some shots of the little fella. I'm gonna try something, watch this. Look at that. Now, believe it or not, this guy is just as at home in the trees as he is on the ground. So no matter what shelter I build later, it's not gonna be rough scale proof. Out of all the snakes I've found on this island so far, this rough scale right here would have to be the one that I'd love to get bitten by the least. Now, when I first found this snake, you heard me mistake it for a keelback and pretty much everywhere that these rough scales live, there'll be keelbacks. They're almost an identical species. The only difference between the two is a keelback is harmless. This guy will kill you. I know you've found a nice little place to curl up in there, but this is my scarf. Can't let you have it. 
yeah. You go, not this way. <laughs> So it's currently late afternoon at the moment and it's been a really cool day out here in the outback finding so many cool species. Sadly we didn't get to track down the taipan yet but we still got a couple more days and they mainly come out early morning. One of the things I've been told about these inland taipans is they don't mind the cold too much. They can be found in temperatures ranging from 19 up to 24 all the way up to 30 all different temperatures so we're planning to go out early tomorrow morning and try to track a few down but what we thought we'd do is since it's been a 40 degree day today a lot of these animals can't stand that heat during the day so they'll come out at night on the road so we're just going for a cruise at the moment the sun's setting hopefully we'll be able to get a couple more species in this video there's some deadly animals that come out after dark so see if we can get a couple let's keep cruising Right, so just in here, we're just following an eastern brown snake right now through the bush. We'll get some footage of him. This is the second most venomous snake in the world. This is crazy because as he's slithering off here, we're looking for the first most venomous snake in the world and we have found number two. Both live here in Australia and both live at this place that we're looking for them and we're letting them be. Oh, be careful. We do not want to get bitten by this guy all the way out here. Not a snake that you want to mess with. So here is yet again another snake that we found as we were heading back to camp. And this is another eastern brown snake Another one of the second most venomous snakes in the world. He's just curled up right there. Beautiful little snake. We've been following him around for a bit. It's very hot tonight, probably about 30 degrees. So this snake would be out here hunting, but we're gonna leave him be. Alright, so take a look at this snake right here, the first snake of the night. Now what this is, is it's a spotted black snake, one of three black snakes that actually live out here. Another species that we're trying to find tonight is the king brown, and believe it or not, they're not actually a brown snake. They're in this same family, and they're pretty awesome snakes. Out here in this area, they get really red color. But this is a venomous species, not a species you wanna get bitten by way out here in the outback. We should find a lot more species tonight, but this is the first spotted black snake that I've ever seen. All right, see you later, mate. Right, so take a look at this right here. The second species of snake for the night and another highly venomous snake, one of the most venomous snakes in Australia. And the second species of black snake that we found tonight. Now I found the spotted black a little bit earlier. This right here is the king brown snake. Now I know it's called a brown snake, but they're actually in the black snake family. And the reason why they call them the king is because they eat pretty much everything out here, including other snake species. They're like the king cobras that we just filmed over in Bali. Even if he finds a smaller king brown out here, a woma python, he doesn't care what species of snake it is, it's fair game and they're immune to snake venom. Now he's just tucked himself right next to the road at the moment as we were cruising this road at night. 
We actually saw him on the road. He's just come off. But yeah, another really venomous snake and a really cool snake to find out here. You know, I love coming on these road trips because you get to find a whole array of new species. This guy and the last black snake are both new species for me that I've actually got to film tonight. So pretty stoked about that, hey. But yeah, you're an absolute champion, mate. We'll see you later. So just above me right here is the first orangutan that we've actually found on foot walking through this jungle. Now this jungle is filled with so many animals, sun bears, leopards, orangutans, but this is the animal that we came out here to find and they are so cool. They're literally the people of the forest. And he's just sitting up in the tree right there, looking down at me. She didn't look very impressed. But I wanted to show this orangutan that I would much rather be living out here with them than back in the city. So after spotting a highly venomous snake way up in the canopy a few trees away from her, I knew it'd be the perfect opportunity to test out my climbing skills. So you can see, just up in this tree, big pit viper. So cool, big fella. Got a nice blue color on him. I feel like an orangutan up here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come back down. <laughs> yes. There we go. Good job. <laughs> so this is why they call it a rainforest. Out here in Borneo, we've been looking for snakes all day. We found so many cool species. It's just started to rain at the moment and we're hopefully gonna find some more snakes. We're gonna head back to the car at the moment, go to a different location. If it stops raining, go out and film some more animals. But yeah, not bad. It's a spitting cobra. And as they get their name, they actually spit their venom. He's a beautiful snake though, that's why I'm wearing these glasses. I'd almost rather just get spat on in the eyes than wear these glasses <laughs> on camera, but you can go blind if this snake spits its venom towards your eyes. They can also bite, so he's not an animal that I want to get tagged by either. And he's looking at me. I'm gonna put my glasses on a bit better because in a minute, he might spit his venom. There we go. A little bit just got on my lip. That King Cobra that we caught earlier on, not too far from here, would have eaten plenty of spitting cobras in its day. It's one of their favorite food to eat. I'll just get down eye to eye with this snake at the moment. We were cruising this road. We just found that King Cobra and that big reticulated python out in the jungle. It started pouring down rain and we've just found this little spitting cobra right here. We're heading to a place now where we're going to be looking for a really rare species of snake. But to find this little guy on the way there is pretty cool. He just spat venom on me again. We're just going to get him off the road at the moment and keep going on our mission. So this right here is the red-headed crate. Believe it or not, we've been working with king cobras. We've been working with a lot of venomous snakes over this trip. And this one right here is the deadliest. It's not a snake that you want to get bitten by, by any means. And we've just found him cruising in these leaves right here, just over to my left. You're right, buddy. Very intense moment. Almost just as intense as that experience that we had with the king cobra. You can see at the front there, They've got that orange head. And if you follow that dark body, that black and white body all the way up to their tail, their tail's even brighter. Venom is such a crazy thing when it comes to animals, thinking that this little thing right here injects you with a liquid, and even though it's not that much, it can kill you. There are so many different species 
of beautiful snakes around the world. But this one right here tops it off for me. That's such a gorgeous looking snake. In the Elapid family, the red-headed crate. One of the most venomous species you can find out here in Borneo. But this one has calmed right down. We were just walking out here and found him. And what a gorgeous snake they are. Take a look at that animal right there. It's been a really intense day. We've been going all day, catching so many different snakes, king cobras, massive reticulated pythons, and now this red-headed crate right here. But I think a good thing to acknowledge is when you're getting tired, when your body's sore, you should stop dealing with these snakes because that's when accidents happen. That's when you can get bitten. And mate, my body's killing me. I'm really tired. But what an awesome experience with this animal. We're gonna let him go and keep going on our mission. That's been pretty cool. That over there is Snake Island. We just gotta cross the creek and see if we can find anything while we're over there. Have a go at this in here. Take a look at that big snake skin. Or get it out. You can see how smart these snakes are. It's actually used all of this stuff to help itself shed. This guy's probably sitting around here somewhere. So it's not a python. Pythons have three distinct belly scales. This one just has a strip across here. The shed is really dark. It's almost a dead giveaway and the scales on its head. I would say confidently that this is a big red belly shed. That is a really good find out here. It's good to know that these snakes are out here. I've never found a red belly on this island. I'm just walking up this creek. We finally made it to Snake Island and I've just spotted this massive flash of black. From about 50 meters away, I already know what this species is. It's highly venomous. I'm gonna go up to it, not get bitten out here by this snake and hopefully get some footage of it. So this is a red-bellied black snake. They are a highly venomous species. They're actually in the top 10 most venomous snakes in Australia. Another one to add to the list that I've actually found on this island, which is really cool. Very gentle snakes though, placid snakes. Often you'll see them sitting around water sources looking for frogs, rats, birds, and sometimes even venturing into the water itself and going fishing and catching fish. Going for a flick, mate. You wouldn't want to get tagged by a big red belly black snake out here, I tell you that. But saying that, to find one out here on this little island, so cool. They're a very, very beautiful species. Let me see if I can get a bit closer to them. Hey, I'm here. Watch out. So amazing being this close. Literally would be able to touch this snake right now and just sharing this beautiful experience with it. Red bellies carry such a presence with them. You can feel their energy when you're dealing with a big snake like this. This one's about five foot long, still not full grown, but a beautiful looking snake, really healthy. And yeah, we're gonna let him do his thing. Take a look at this right here. That is a massive reticulated python out here in the jungle, so. This is a huge snake, very strong animal. Take a look at the size of him. Oh, come on buddy. Oh, you're okay, whoa. He's got a mouth filled with fangs and he's incredibly strong. They're the longest species of snake in the world, longer than the anacondas. On this adventure, we found so many different snakes so far. About an hour ago, you can see this guy's about to strike. He's loading up at the moment. Whoa. We found a big king cobra, five meters long. And now we found this guy. And I can tell when he's about to strike, he kind of gives me a warning. He opens up his mouth a little bit. I'll see if I can move around, if we'll do it again, all right? Ready? Three, two, one. Wow. There we go. You know, that's not a warning that a small animal, or when they get big enough, even a human will get because they're camouflage hunters. He'll be sitting next to a game trail waiting for someone or something to walk past, strike out, wrap it up in that body, and this snake would be so strong. Every breath that animal takes, he'll squeeze tighter. He'll keep squeezing tighter until there's no air left in the animal, and then he will swallow it whole. Absolutely amazing snake. I reckon I might bring him out into the open a little bit, and see if we can get him to calm down and actually handle him. 
Whoa. Nearly got me, mate. We'll just lift him up right now. Whoa. There we go. You can kind of get a bit of an understanding about how big this snake is right now. He is massive. This trip to Borneo has seriously been crazy. We've spent a lot of the time out here in the bush looking for snakes and it's paying off because we found some epic creatures, epic animals and had some crazy experiences. And this is what I wanted coming out here and this is what I'm gonna be filming for the next few years on my videos. So if you wanna be a part of this journey, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, comment down below and yeah, you get to see more adventures like this. I'm so tired right now. We're gonna keep walking through this forest to see if we can find some other snakes. But mate, I'm stoked with that. Why wouldn't you be? not believe what just happened so I was walking up the creek and I was looking for animals I lifted up a rock and a big black snake shot out underneath it and I was thinking that it was a juvenile red belly it's very common to see these guys hanging out around water sources and I was waiting for him to come back out and as he's sticking his head out I realized it's one of the most venomous snakes here in Australia in the top 10 known as the small-eyed snake but what he's doing is he's positioned himself under a rock see that He's literally just positioning himself under the rock. He'll come out, get a breath of air, and then go straight back down. These snakes do not live in water. It's rare to see them in the water, but it's crazy to see that if they're put in a situation where they feel a bit threatened and they think something might attack it, they can do something like this. And while I was filming him as well, it was probably the biggest leech I've ever seen that grabbed a hold of my arm. He's just swimming around this pool at the moment. And they actually live in these creek systems. It's cool to see them swimming around and they'll latch onto you and actually suck your blood. But yeah, he's gonna drop back into the water and go straight back onto my leg. <laughs> biggest leech I've ever seen, probably one of the biggest small-eyed snakes I've ever seen as well in a creek system. Seems like really cool things happen every time I come out to this island, which is why I keep coming back here. But yeah, let's keep going. So we're actually in Western Bali at the moment and we're on the hunt for king cobras as you'd know, but we got a call up for a spitting cobra and we're gonna go see if we can rescue it. Should be pretty cool all the way out here in this little rice paddy. Oh yeah. So, we've actually got a spitting cobra stuck in this net right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it out of here, bag it and release it in a place where it won't come in contact with humans and won't get stuck in this net because eventually, if no one found it here, this cobra would have died. Mm -hmm. So his head's trapped that way at the moment, which is why I'm not worried about him spitting the venom at me. Because not only did I shave this morning, but if it gets in my eyes, you can go blind from the venom of this cobra. But yeah. There we go. Being very careful of the snake. It's just the hand shot now, yeah? That's yeah. He's got the hand. Last thread. Okay. Oh. oh. And there we go. And that right there is the spitting cobra, which we're gonna bag at the moment, release, and what an introduction <laughs> into the trip here over here in Bali. Spitting cobra, seeing it up close. Is this a pretty good size one? Yeah. Pretty good, good size. size, yeah. 
All right, let's bag him up and release him. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, <laughs> casualty. Okay. What happened? Uh -huh. Yeah. So this right here is a big king cobra out here in the jungle of Borneo. This is one of the species that we wanted to film out here. It's so cool to film these guys again, but this one right here is a different locality. So you can see those amazing colors that he's got on him. And if I grab him like this, he's straight onto me. If I just pick him up like this right now, they're the longest venomous snake in the world. And the scientific name for these king cobras is Opio Pagus Hana, which means snake eater. They're a cannibalistic snake. So this guy in his lifetime would have definitely eaten a few other king cobras and other species of snakes out here in the jungle. So by controlling those snake populations, there's not heaps of snakes that are going into villagers' houses here, getting in contact with people. And you can see, got to be very careful when dealing with this snake like this because out here, there is no anti-venom. So if you get bitten, good luck surviving. They have huge venom glands at the front of their mouth right there. Okay guys, to prove this snake, are still have a fang. So it's not a fangless or still have a venom. We'll see, okay? So what we're doing right now is just milking this big king cobra to show you that these guys do have venom. Ready? Oh, look at that. And if that went into your system, all of that venom right there, you would be in so much trouble out here in the bush. So the reason why this snake right here can kill you in 30 minutes is because they have a neurotoxic venom that is very potent. One of the most venomous snakes on earth. And not only that, they have so much venom in those massive venom glands. Because they're the biggest venomous snake in the world, their venom glands are absolutely massive. Enough venom to kill an elephant and enough venom to kill 20 of us standing right here. Yeah. But yeah, pretty crazy. Look at the fang. So they have a Proteroglypha fang uh, belong to the Elapid family, yeah. like Black Mamba, Green Mamba, and also Taipan, Inland Taipan too, from yeah. Australia. They have also Proteroglypha fang. Yeah, like this one, small, but deadly. <laughs> deadly. <laughs> All right, and we got another snake right there. Would you take a look at that? That guy sitting in the tree right there is the highly venomous Stevens banded snake. We got one. That is so cool. I knew they were out in this area. I'd never seen one here before though. So to find one on this little rainforest island is so cool. If I got bitten out here, would I make it to the hospital in time? There's always a chance, but trust me, you wouldn't be in a good way. The venom from this snake will actually make your blood clot. So I cannot afford to get bitten by this snake tonight. Oh look, starting to pour down. This snake would have 20 or 30 little burrows, hollow trees around this area that it'll go and sleep in throughout the year. And sometimes they'll even stay in these hollow trees and logs for up to five months over the colder months of the year. And it's pretty funny saying that they look like a tiger snake because currently there's been no anti-venom derived from this species. So if you were to get bitten by a Stevens banded snake, they'd actually give you tiger snake venom. Here he goes. Oh, drop down here. Come on, mate, you can go, make a run for it. And that was so cool. We found so many snakes today. All right, we're gonna let this little fella be and keep looking for more snakes. Let's go. So what we're doing right now is we're just walking through this jungle at the moment and we're looking for highly venomous snakes. So cool coming out onto this land after dark to try and find these venomous species. There's vipers, vine snakes, slug snakes, bronze backs. So many different species we can find here after dark. So we're just gonna walk around and see if you can find any. And if you ever do come to Bali, check out the Bali Reptile Rescue because you can do exactly this and everything you've seen in this video and they're a great bunch of people. This is the perfect way to end the year. And yeah, so blessed that I'm able to come onto this land and find these animals. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Viper. So, just down in front of us here, we've got a white-lipped pit viper. We're just gonna get him off this tree right here. There we go. And that right there is the white-lipped pit viper. Beautiful little snakes that have heat sensing pits. That's how they get their name, Pit Viper. And you can see how hard they'd be to spot in terrain like this. Absolutely blend in perfectly with their surroundings. And another species that's out here that we're looking for tonight is known as the Vine Snake. And they're almost the exact same color. Very awesome species that hopefully we'll be able to find later on. Kind of running out of hook for me to move my hand down, buddy. <laughs> and you can see why there's so many snake bites that are recorded over here in Indonesia. So many camouflage snakes living right near people. We've walked out of the place that we're staying. Within the first five minutes, we've found this guy and there's probably been 50 more pit vipers that we haven't seen. So, for anyone wondering, this is not a defanged snake. This is a wild king cobra with venom that you do not want to get tagged by. They've got big fangs at the front of their mouth and enough venom to kill an elephant. And just because we've got him on this little grass patch right now doesn't mean he's any less dangerous to one that we find fully out there in the wild. Crazy feeling, touching the largest venomous snake in the world and one that carries such an incredible presence with it on the back of the head like that. I remember last time I did this, I was actually 12 years old in the heart of Indonesia as well. So this is the only snake in the world that actually builds its own nest. And how they'll actually build these nests, because obviously they don't have any arms or anything to scratch up a bunch of leaves, is they'll use this massive tail that they've got down the back there. And the big females will get a bunch of leaves in its tail, scratch it up, wait for it to rain, and when it does rain, they'll compact all of that together, lay their eggs inside of it, and it'll work as a bit of a compost to keep those eggs warm enough until they're ready to hatch. And yeah, just spending time with such a magnificent creature, so special to me. This year's been a crazy one for me, finding so many different animals from all around the world. I think it's a good way to end it on this big king cobra right here. So this is the second King Cobra that we've got. Bit smaller than the other one, but this one is so much more aggressive. This is the snake that I think I'm gonna try to kiss on the back of the head. Now these snakes are fully wild. They've got fangs, they've got venom. If you got bitten here in Bali, you would be in so much trouble, but I'm gonna give it a go, see what happens. You think it's okay? Wait for Ray.
good one. So although I am kissing this cobra and touching it on the back of the head, I do have professionals with me who are putting the snake into a trance-like state in front of me. They're waving something and that snake will focus on it. And that's the only reason we can do this with these king cobras. <laughs> so you'll see documentaries and videos of snake charmers who actually defang and drug these snakes. This is a wild snake that was caught a week ago. Not defanged, not drugged or anything that's going to get eventually released back out into the wild. And if you did get bitten, you would be in serious trouble over here in Bali. But yeah, pretty amazing experience. What a way to end the year. really thick jungle that we're walking through at the moment and what we're looking for is big pieces of bamboo because this is where the big females build the nests and it's a bit late in the season for them actually to be guarding their eggs on their nest however it's still really good habitat for these snakes to take cover in and yeah it's crazy to think that in a place like this way out in the jungle there's five meter king cobras slithering around eating other snakes out here yeah, absolutely crazy. Hopefully we can find one. Take a look at this. Big King Cobra. Oh, here we go. Whoa. That is not a bad snake out here in the jungle of Bali. And he's firing. And we've done it again. That is so crazy. Look how high he's standing up. This is the biggest venomous snake in the world. Now I've been out here to Indonesia that many times finding these snakes, but every time we actually come out here to the wild and track one down, it's so amazing. Look at the terrain that we're walking through. We're walking through the jungle, finding a snake that can grow up over five meters in length. We'll just bring him out into the open a bit more. Look how gorgeous this snake is. Come on, mate. <laughs> okay, this is pretty crazy. Look at the size of this one. Could be up over three meters long. Actually, I'd definitely say it is. a bit better. And to just handle this one and feel this snake is so incredible. But yeah, it's not something you can get complacent about doing, that's for sure. Big three meter male king cobra out here in the jungle. Take a look at that. Not a snake that you want to get bitten by. So we've just positioned him around this tree so he can't get a longer enough lunge at me if he wants to have a go. And you know, the funny thing about these snakes is you see them in a lot of the time on those snake charmer documentaries where they're playing them instruments and people think that the music is actually controlling them, but it's not at all. These snakes are actually deaf. They can't hear it, but they fixate on movement. So if I'm moving my hand, back and forth right now. He doesn't even know that my cameraman is behind him. He's so focused and angry and trying to kill me that he fully blanks out whatever's behind him. So that's why you can actually touch them on the back of the head and kiss them on the back of the head. Okay. Very calm. Good snake, like a trained one. <laughs> At least he was striking that. <laughs> Maybe you should have been more careful.
crazy snake. The biggest venomous snake in the world. So much respect for this animal right here. And yeah. He is so fixated on my guide in front of him that he's not even looking at me right now. Yeah. But, there we go. As soon as he sees you in the corner of his eye, it's all over. <laughs> it's incredible how much this snake has calmed down since we first found it. You know, they are amazing animals and once they sense that energy and also once the lactic acid <laughs> builds up, they slow right down and calm right down into these beautiful creatures. And even on this trip over here in Bali, just running into different people, lots of them say how they fear snakes and they're afraid of them. But I think that we should respect them and know that this species does have the capability to kill someone. But if we stay out of their way and don't harm these snakes, it's very easy not to get bitten by these snakes out here in the wild. But yeah, just looking at this beautiful king right now, I hope you can see the absolute beauty in this moment and this animal. I think it's so amazing how different all of these experiences with all these different species of snakes were and how each of these animals are so different with different personalities. They are so amazing and such a cool animal to have in this world. So yeah, I'm sure over the next few years we're gonna have plenty more amazing encounters like these in this video. Species like the black mamba, tiger snake, rattlesnake are all animals that I would love to film over the next few years. So if you wanna be a part of this journey, Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you legends next week in the next adventure.